Hi, I'm Tom Silva from This Old House, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build this headboard using staircase parts. You can make this piece for any size bed. We use balusters, two handrails for the top and bottom, and two newel posts. The newel posts have flat sides, so it makes it easy to attach the rails and the bed frame. We pick balusters that have round tops and round bottoms. Be sure to pick a bottom rail that has a fillet, a thin, removable strip of wood that you'll use as a template for making holes. Before you start building, take a length of elastic tape and make marks along it every two or three inches. You'll use this to mark the spacing for the balusters later. First, we'll size the headboard. Lay the top and bottom rails on your work surface and place the end of the post across them. Make sure that the distance between the center of the post is equal to the width of your bed frame. Adjust the spacing as needed and mark the cuts on both rails inside the post. You'll make these cuts later. To figure out the baluster spacing, line up the bottom of one of the balusters with one of the cutoff lines on the bottom rail. Mark the baluster's center on the fillet and do the same on the other end of the rail. These are the spots where you attach the elastic tape. Now line up one of the marks on the tape with the first mark on the rail. Then stretch the tape to get the baluster spacing you want. For tight spacing, stretch the tape less. For loose spacing, stretch it more. But remember, you must keep the spacing at four inches or less for safety. When you're happy with the look, nail through one of the marks on the tape into the second mark on the other end of the rail. Once that's done, you transfer the marks from the tape to the rail's fillet. Now you're going to use the fillet as a template for making holes in both rails. Just slide it out of the bottom rail and tack it to the underside of the top one. Drill pilot holes through the marks and into the top rail. Then glue the fillet back into place on the bottom rail and cut both rails to length. Next, you'll size the balusters and determine where the top and bottom rails will be attached to the newel post. Use a piece of the cutoff from the top rail as a guide to figure out where the top rail will go. Lay one of the balusters along the post and position it so you like how it looks. You may need to trim your baluster if it extends past the top of the rail, like ours did. Once you mark and cut the first baluster, use it to mark the cuts for the rest so that they'll all be the same size. Use one of the balusters to mark where the top of the bottom rail should sit. You can use a scrap piece of bottom rail to mark its attachment spot on both posts. Next, we're gonna make holes in the rails for inserting the balusters. Use a paddle bit to enlarge the pilot holes you made earlier. You might need two different bits, top and bottom, depending on the dimensions of the balusters. Now we're ready to assemble the headboard. Apply wood glue to the baluster pins and fit them into the holes on the bottom rail. Be sure to square up the face of the baluster to the rail before the glue dries. Then fit the railing onto the balusters, using a mallet if needed to get a snug fit. The final step is attaching the newel post to the rails. We're going to drill pilot holes all the way through the post, at the top and bottom. Also drill holes into the ends of the rails. Then use timber screws to fasten the post to the rails. Sand the entire piece and stain or paint the headboard before attaching it to the bed frame. Now the place where you rest your weary head each night is an even more welcome sight.